us be the love we share all year through. May the most precious Ooh. gift of the season be a heart filled with life anew. And may the hope of this holy
This is Sunday, December 13, 2020, the third Sunday in Advent. I am Paul Douglas Walfall. Welcome to worship here at First United Church in Fort Saskatchewan, Alberta. Welcome to all in the name of Jesus the Christ, whose love we know, whose peace we feel, and who has promised neither to leave nor forsake us. We welcome you in the name of Jesus and we pray that our worship today will be a blessing and a comfort to you wherever you are. Today is the third Sunday of Advent. Today our Advent focus will be on joy. You will note that the candle to be lit this morning in our Advent wreath is the pink candle. It is my hope that this morning you and I will be filled with joy as we prepare for the coming of our Lord and that the joy of the Lord will be our strength as we worship. May we this morning be filled with the Holy Spirit that leads us to worship in spirit and in truth. Friends, for thousands of years, First Nation people have walked on this land. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and spirituality. I am gathered and I, I am on the traditional territory of the Cree, Assiniboine, and Ojibwe nations. And I acknowledge their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. Additionally, at this time, I wish to honor the gifts, teachings, and heritage of the Métis people of Nation 4. Our Advent journey continues, our time of celebration. We celebrate the coming of the Christ child who turns the world upside down. We come to dance joyfully in anticipation of this season of new life new life that challenges and guides, comforts, and confronts. Out of pain comes possibility. Out of anguish comes transformation. Out of loneliness comes community. Out of labor comes birth. We come in joy not to distract us from life's plans, Instead, joy emerges out of each disruption and within each disappointment. We come to heal one another in the midst of all life's challenges. We light the first candle reminding us of the way of hope. We light the second candle reminding us of Christ's path of peace. We light the third candle, which dances in joy, even as it burns. Jesus in our minds, I, O oh God. We imagine the boundless love pouring out of this child, just as we imagine the, cockly, the colicky nights and the diapering days. Teach us to stop drawing boundaries between joy and labor, allowing us to lean into the wholeness and complexity of life. 
bless us this morning with an openness to all of life's realities, knowing we are never alone in our struggle, nor in the celebration. Amen. Friends, it is my joy to welcome each of you to worship this day. And it is my prayer that as we worship God, we will continue to experience the bountiful pleasure of the Holy Spirit. Just a few announcements to bring to you. And I would ask that we remember in our prayers during this time, all who are sick, all who are not well, those who are affected by COVID-19, either physically or through their relatives. We want to remember our sister Judy Melnick who fell and had surgery and pray that she continues in recovery well. Please note that our Christmas Eve services on December the 24th will be at 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. Both services will be broadcast via our YouTube channel. The 5 p.m. service will be our children, a special children's service, and we encourage you and your family to be part of that. The 8 p.m. service will be a family and Holy Communion service. Next Sunday, the fourth Sunday in Advent, will be our Blue Christmas service. We will be remembering as especially at that time, those who are affected by or living with COVID-19. We ask that you make a special effort to be part of that service. Please note that coffee time or virtual coffee time will occur immediately after worship. As I said last week, come give me the, the count of 10, just count 10 and then sign on. We will be available after worship. Kindly note that owing to the current health restrictions, the church office and sanctuary are closed effective today. As a, re as a result of this, there will be no in-person meetings at the church office. The telephone messages will be answered. Um, and if you need to speak to one of us, please do give us a call or an email message. Kindly note also that um, while we continue in this time of shutdown, as it were, that we will be seeking to have worship services via um, YouTube as we are doing now. Um, the church is not closed, it's just that we are following the health restrictions that are before us. I pray that you will be able to worship God in spirit and in truth today, and that God's spirit.
let us pray. Spirit of God, we give you thanks for drawing near, for touching the world in the Savior's birth. Help us to draw near to you as we prepare our hearts and our world for the justice and peace you bring. Guide our preparations for Christmas as we share the good news with those who suffer. As we offer our friendship to those who are alone, move within our hearts as we make a way for your coming by forgiving others as we have been forgiven. Come, Holy Spirit, be born in us anew that we may live in your mercy and your grace. Amen. Let us take this time for our prayer of confession. God of the prophets, we give thanks for the voice that cries out and demand our attention. They call us to put our trust and hope in you. Forgive us when we close our eyes to your vision and when we stop our ears to your promise. Heal our weakness when we give up on ourselves, on one another, and on you. Free us from hopelessness, living that we may joyfully love and serve others in your holy name. Amen. My friends, know we are forgiven in Christ's name. May love live in us and through us that all may know God's peace. Amen. This morning, in the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verse 6 to 8, and 19 to 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Now John the Baptist denies being the Messiah. Verse 19. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but he confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness, make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know, he is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The, the word, word of the Lord. Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We thank God for... We remember that the gifts that have been dedicated are not only our gifts of money, but also of our time, our talents, and abilities, all to the work of God. Let us pray. Generous God, your love renews us and restores our strength. With gratitude, we offer you a portion of what you have given to us. 
receive our gifts, our prayers, and our service, that your church may become a source of hope for the world. Amen. Let us pray. And now, O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together be found acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. It would seem that from the end of November, immediately after Remembrance Day, that the world rushes in a mad rush to celebrate Christmas. Ah, I would even correct myself. For some, they did not wait until Remembrance Day. September started and we were off. We were off to celebrate Christmas with all the joys of the lights, with all of the trimmings, with all of the preparations, with all of the gift giving. It seems as if we cannot wait for December the 25th to come. And then suddenly in the midst of all of this preparation, the church tells you it's Advent, not Christmas. And we look on ourselves with some degree of dumbfoundedness, wondering, now what are they talking about? Why can't we sing the Christmas carols? Why can't we be jolly and have all of the fun things that Christmas is all about? In the early church, we are reminded that Advent was taken so seriously that you were not allowed to sing Christmas carols until the fourth Sunday in Advent. Advent songs and hymns were to be sung, not the Christmas carol. Advent has a very interesting history because it comes into the church's life as a period of preparation, similar to the season of Lent. Advent is a time for us to prepare, to prepare to celebrate the joy of the season of Christmas. So today, the scripture reading is not about the baby in Bethlehem. Today, the scripture reading is not about the angels and the shepherds. Today, the scripture reading is not even about the wise men preparing to come. Instead, today's scripture reading is about a man named John. A man named John who the gospel writer describes as being a witness for Jesus who testified to the coming of the light. A witness is one who speaks about what they know. A witness is one who tells others, this is what I have known, this is what I have seen, this is what I've heard, this is what I have experienced. The witness does not tell secondhand information. The witness instead tells us literally what they know for themselves. An interesting reality about the word witness is that if we take it to the Greek, the word for witness is the word marturius. Marturius also is the word that also translates into the word martyr. Interestingly, the witness tells of what they know. The martyr also gives off their life for what they know. We are called today to remember that we are witnesses. Witnesses of what we know of the work of God in and through God's creation in our lives. As the gospel writer speaks about John being a witness, we are reminded that John is speaking at a time of great discontent in the life of Israel, a time when there was Roman hegemony in the land, a time when the people themselves were waiting on a Messiah, a time when there was gloom, where there was concern, there was anxiety. But as interesting as that may be, notice that as the conversation continues with John, that John is very clear on who he is. John makes it clear when he's asked the question, are you the Messiah? No, I am not. Are you Elijah? No, I am not. John even dispels the belief that he is a prophet. There is a clear sense of identity that John has. He knows who he is not. He's simply one called to bear witness. 
sometimes we in our modern times in the world and in the church need to remember who we are. We are not God. We are not even Jesus. We are called to be witnesses to the things that God has done in our world. And that reality check of who we are should cause a degree of humility among us as church people. Humility to know that we are simply bearing the light for others to see the truth of Christ in the world. The reality stands to reason, my friends, that if we don't bear the light, then how will others know of the goodness of God? If we are not willing to witness to the goodness of God, then how will people know the truth of what the season of Christmas is all about? It is up to us to show and to tell the truth of what we know of the goodness of God. We are called to be witnesses. And in our world today, that is a very important task. Yet John goes on to say that the writing of John the Gospel goes on to say to us that John the Baptist describes himself of one crying in the wilderness. You know, objectively, if we take that particular image, we would wonder why cry in a wilderness? Why not cry in the middle of a city? Why not cry out where the busyness of life is occurring? Why cry in a wilderness? Who is in a wilderness to hear you crying out in the first place? At times, being a witness can be a lonely experience. At times, being a witness can be seen as a time-wasting experience. Who is listening to us? Who is taking us on when we are speaking about the goodness of God? The world seems to be very busy getting along with trying to prepare for Christmas, or the world seems to be very busy getting along trying to avoid the COVID-19. Who is taking us on in all that we are saying? At times, it can seem that we are crying in the wilderness. Yet John, by his very statement that he's one crying in the wilderness, points to us of the need for us to persevere, to be persistent with the task that is ours to do. That ours is a task not to be successful, and it's not a matter of how many people are actually listening to us. Yes, it does not really matter. What matters most is that we are faithful to the task that is Faithful to bear the light of Christ in our world that is needed to hear that light. Faithful to witness to the hope and the joy that comes in God. Hope knowing that God is still at work in our world. Hope in knowing that no matter how high the count of COVID-19 cases may be each day as we hear it, no matter how much the issues of wars may occur, no matter how many things that are going wrong in your life or in mine, hope because God is still at work in our world. Hope because of the things we do as we work alongside with God in God's world. Last week, I had opportunity to write to my congregation, and I had to remind us that when we wear a mask, it is not only a sign of following the health guidelines or wearing of a mask is also a sign of hope. Hope that COVID does not have the last word. We wear a mask and we wash our hands because we know COVID does not have the last word. The last word always belongs to God and we work alongside with God. And so we wear the mask, we follow the health guidelines because we are caring for others. We have hope. We have joy, but joy comes in knowing that God is with us. God is with us even though we may not be able to see God, and at times our senses may doubt, but we know that the promise of God is that God will be with us even unto the close of the age. In the midst of unemployment, in the midst of hardship, God has not abandoned us, and the joy we have is the joy of knowing in our hearts that God is with us. We are working through the circumstances and the situations because God continues 
to journey with us. That is what we are called to witness to, even in the midst of the wilderness, even though it may appear that no one is listening to us, no one is taking us on. Ours is the call to be faithful to witness to these truths, even in the world where we live. And as we witness to those truths, John also reminds us that the one we witness about is coming. The one we witness about is greater than ourselves. The Bible reminds us greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. That is the comfort we hold to as we witness to the truths the hope to the joy that comes in God. As we get closer to the celebration of Christmas, as we prepare for Christmas 2020, it will not be like the Christmases we have had in the past or the recent past. Instead, this Christmas will be one where there'll be many soul searching and many will wonder where is the happiness in it. Ours is the task, my friends, to bring hope even to the questioning, to hope to remind others that God is still with us, that God has not abandoned us. We have hope because God is still at work in God's world. Ours is the task as we prepare for Christmas to bring joy, the joy of knowing that God stands with us through every circumstance and situation. And even as we witness the hope and joy to cause others to hear, cause others to know, to be the light shining in the night knowing that we are called not to be successful. Millions may not be attracted to what we say, but even if the one, even if the one will listen, the one person, the one child, then we are called to be faithful. May we, my friends, be faithful in witnessing of the hope and the joy that comes in God this season now and always. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, the true light, in this revealing light, people and communities change. Leaders who abuse the power of their authority and position find humility. Those who hoard their wealth and resources find generosity. Struggling single parents and those on welfare or minimum wage find support from food banks and community organizations. Silent cries for friendship find a listening ear. The questions of our persons are taken seriously. You have seen the true light. We see the true light in Jesus. We will be leading light others. Jesus, the true light. In this revealing light, the suffering find relief. Those uncertain of the way if out of addiction find a group to accompany and support them. Persons afraid to go to the doctor about troubling problems find the courage to make an appointment. Families in financial difficulties seek out the credit counselors. The sick and mentally troubled receive the help they need. And the bereaved find the friends, find that friends are with them in the empty place. You have seen the true light. We see the true light in Jesus. We will be a leading light to others. Jesus, the true light. In the revealing light, the 
community of faith searches for the way ahead. Churches tried fresh patterns of worship with an emphasis on silence or singing. Churches make contact with their neighboring faith communities and eat and learn together. Churches promote mission enterprises and support them as generously as they do local ones. Churches remember their neighborhood setting and ask their neighbors how the church can help them. You have seen the true light. We see the true light in Jesus will be a leading light to others. Jesus, the true light. In this revealing light, each one of us is challenged to learn and grow and change. We welcome insights into our personality and ways of being with others. We welcome fresh opportunities to learn at work and serve in our leisure time. We welcome the change to make amends for past wrong and receive the forgiveness of others. We welcome the word that reminds us of the central place of the spiritual in our lives and the need to give time and space to God in our day. You have seen the true light. We see the true light in Jesus and we will be a leading light to others. Amen. Wherever you are, and if you are in the present company of others, I urge you to reach out and hold the hands of those around you, in your family, in your household, as together we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, as you go now from this holy place, let us look at the signs of our, the coming one. Let us be messengers preparing the way for the one whom we ask who is sending us. In his name we pray. Amen. And may grace, mercy, and peace from God Almighty, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit be with us all and all who claim an interest in our prayers, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace, my friends. Have a wonderful week.